watch collectors this is Ken from Time Visions Watches. I'm here to do a quick video overview of the new Swiss ISA 6371C chronograph quartz movement. Um, this movement is something that Invicta has been uh, substituting recently uh, as they release new versions of their Pro Diver Scuba models uh, as well as some, several other watches. It's become a very popular new movement within Invicta's lineup. And it's created some confusion for some of our customers. So we wanted to put this video together to help explain exactly how this movement works, how it contrasts with what you have found previously with Pro Diver Scubas, and also, very importantly, how to calibrate it as uh, the instructions that are provided with it from Invicta in the Lily Yellow Operator's Manual do not match this movement and it will not work properly if you follow those instructions. So uh, sit back and uh, enjoy and here we go. Uh, first, a quick overview of the dial of the new, uh, this new Swiss ISO movement. You'll notice that in position three, we still have the constantly, constant running second hand register. In position nine, we have the minute accumulator. This is a 30 minute, a minute accumulator for the chronograph function. So as uh, each minute elapses during the, the uh, timing of an event, this will tick over one increment. And finally, and this is the new one, the new piece of this movement that is causing some confusion for some of our customers, is the bottom register in the six o'clock position. In the past, when Invicta was using uh, Swiss Ronda movements in these models, uh, what this typically was is very often a fast runner, which would typically um, time one-tenth of a second within the chronograph or for some of the models, it was a 24 hour indicator. Uh, those are both gone in this movement. What this subdial now does, it is an hour accumulator for the chronograph. So we can time longer events. This is a 10 hour chronograph. Um, so to explain exactly what that means is as your second hand for the chronograph makes one full revolution, your minute accumulator ticks over one increment, one minute. This is a 30 minute subdial. As this makes one full revolution, in other words, 30 minutes of the event have elapsed, your hour accumulator down here will tick over half a unit, half an increment. Uh, when this is made two full revolutions over here, um, you will have one hour will have elapsed and this will have ticked over to the one o'clock position to indicate an hour of elapsed time. So just a little bit different functionality on this movement than what you've seen previously. All right, and now for the second part of the video, we're going to walk you through how to put this watch into calibration mode and reset uh, any of the, of the hands involved with the chronograph that have been knocked out of calibration by, for some reason. Uh, I've taken the opportunity actually to put this watch out of calibration. The reset position for this chronograph is now two or three seconds to the right of 12 o'clock. And if you're like me, and I'm a, I'll be, I was a watch collector well before I became a watch dealer. Um, looking down at that chronograph second hand would drive me out of my mind. So I would absolutely have to have that reset to the proper position. And we're going to walk you through how you do that. Well, first, it's, uh, the, the process to do this is very different than the one described in Invicta's manual. They describe the reset process on a uh, Swiss Ronda movement. This is a Swiss ISO movement, the 6371C, and it works very differently. First, um, the first thing you have to do to get into calibration mode is take the watch and pull the crown out one stop from the case. Not two stops as you would on the Ronda movement, one stop. And then you push the upper function pusher once and you'll see the register at six o'clock made one full revolution. Just to let you know that that is the um, function that is now in calibration mode. So if we, if this were out of alignment, we would then push the B button, the, the lower function pusher, and you can see just by pushing it, it'll go around and around until you get it aligned perfectly with where you want it to reset. Okay, so now that uh, lower register is now calibrated and let's push the upper function pusher again. You'll notice that the sub dial in the uh, nine o'clock position has made one full revolution now to let you know that that is now in calibra calibration mode. 
Um, you it, we probably also noticed that the chronograph second hand moved. That's normal for this movement. We're not sure why ISA does it that way, but it does happen on every one of the ones we've tested. Ignore it, it doesn't really mean anything. So if the minute accumulator needs calibration, you then again push the B button down until you have it aligned perfectly with where you want it at the 12 o'clock position. Okay. Once you're comfortable with the reset position on the um, 30 minute accumulator, you push the upper function pusher one more time and the chronograph second hand will again show you that it's misaligned two or three seconds past the top of the hour. So to realign this one, you simply push and hold the B button the lower function pusher. You'll notice on this that uh, as we get closer, one thing that's really nice about ISA movements is their chronographs use a micro step motor, being that the seconds are divided into multiple increments. I think it's four ticks per second. So what does that mean? It means that you can really very accurately realign the uh, chronograph um, second hand to exactly where you want it. Uh, on the round of movements, you can only do full one second increments. So you can be off a quarter of a second positionally uh, here and there. With ICE, you can get it pretty much dead on. So I've got that, what I think is uh, at 12 o'clock. I just hit the, um, actually I just push in the crown at this point and uh, the watch should be reset, completely recalibrate. We'll test it by running it. All right, we've now started the chronograph. We'll stop it after only a few seconds and let's reset it and let's check to see if the chronograph second hand arrives successfully back at 12 o'clock. It does, so we have successfully recalibrated the Swiss ISA 6371C movement. We hope that helps and um, uh, avoids any confusion you may have about uh, recalibrating any watches you find with this new Swiss movement. Thanks.